Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to all of you for your testimony for being here with us this morning. Um, as a former startup CEO and now as a member of Congress who has the honor of representing a very vibrant community of innovators and entrepreneurs, I had high hopes when we went into tax reform that we'd be having serious conversations about getting our fiscal house in order and reforming the tax code so we could support economic growth that's built to last. A tax code where skilled workers and innovative ideas can thrive in a stable business climate where modern infrastructure and a world-class higher education system helps students to succeed, and where cutting-edge research creates breakthroughs and successful businesses. Accomplishing those things would have put our country on a path to long-term success and given every American that's been left behind the opportunity to make life better for themselves and for their families. But that's tough work um, that requires a sustained, a sustained and bipartisan effort. Unfortunately, that's not what happened at all at the end of last year. Instead, my friends on the other side of the aisle rushed a bill to President Trump's desk for signature without meaningful public debate or analysis. And now here we are with open questions left about tax extenders, as well as all the unclear, hastily drafted provisions in the final law that our constituents and U.S. businesses are now struggling to understand, in many cases coming to us asking for corrections where the rush process resulted in mistakes. We were promised jobs and growth, but we've seen layoffs across the country, including from some of the Republican tax giveaways most touted beneficiaries, um, companies like Carrier, Kimberly Clark, just to name a few. Congress should not pick winners and losers in the economy, and we should strive for a code that provides certainty to taxpayers, certainty that many of you have talked about today. We should put an end to the cycle of retroactive extensions and jockeying over uncertain tax policies that make it impossible for hardworking families and small businesses to plan for the future. Many of you have brought up this concept of certainty and stability and return on investment. I think these are very important. When, you talk, when we talk about certainty and return, what's the time frame? I know, Ms. Jacobson, you talked about this as well. What's the time frame um, from starting with new technologies to getting through um, to having a sustainable business that you see for your companies? Thank you very much for the question. I, I think, you know, one thing to understand is all of these industries are distinct businesses and you, and you know, and they have different business cycles. So some technologies can be implemented very quickly in say a one or two or three year timeline, but there are others where it could take 10 years to go from the initial, um, origination of that project to construction and then actually fulfilling its ultimate objective. So I think the challenge with this, con this conversation is that we can't look for a one-size-fits-all solution when we look, and I'm speaking now from the energy and the sustainable transportation sectors, they all are distinct. But what we do know is they need to, the tax policy needs to be distributed in an equitable manner. We do not want Congress or other policymakers putting the thumb on the scale for any particular technology. So they need to be equitable and they need to be consistent with their project cycles. So the longest um, opportunity, permanent or certainly multi-year extensions are very welcome. Thank you very much. I yield back.